Now let me talk about how do you jumpstart your career if you want a career in leadership, or how do you kickstart it into gear if you've been stalled, or how do you get to the next level? Because the research that I did in 2012, which ultimately became the book, The Ruby Report, showed that there are clearly, without any confusion or ambiguity at all, there are clearly three things that we need to do as women to manage our careers. And those three things you see listed there. First is to have strong mentors. Second is to engage in developmental opportunities. And third is to make sure that you get effective feedback. Those are the three things. If you take nothing else away from you here tonight, take those three action items away and look at your career and say, do I have strong mentors? Have I engaged in developmental opportunities and where could I? Where am I getting effective feedback from? Because those are the three keys. What are the things that all of the women across all of the companies all agreed were critical to success? And they came up with these three things. The interesting thing, though, is that only one of those items did they agree was number one. And the other two had no priority that the women agreed on. But all of the women agreed that the single most important thing to helping develop their careers and get them promoted was having strong mentors. Now there's a lot of talk about what's the difference between a sponsor and a mentor. A mentor tends to be somebody who can educate you or who can give you advice or who can give you feedback. That tends to be the mentor bucket of behaviors. The sponsor bucket of behaviors tends to be things like advocates for you in the boardroom, helps to get you promoted by knowing who you are and advocating for your promotion and speaking up for you. In many organizations, at the senior leadership ranks and as you're going up, promotions get decided by boards, by groups of people. And so if your name comes up in one of those discussions, and you know nobody knows you, recognizes your name, or nobody can tell stories about you, then your chances of getting that promotion over top of somebody else for whom one or more people are telling stories are slim to none. It's who gets the best press in those meetings. So that's sponsorship versus mentorship. And so when I ask the women around these behaviors to give some more specifics, because in the news, they're being pulled apart and essentially recognized as two different sets of behaviors. The women all said, well, no, it's really one and the same. And sometimes it's one person who does all of that for you. Sometimes it's, you know, multiple people. But all of those behaviors, the sponsorship and the mentorship behaviors, are all included in what's critical and what they considered critical. And so I call that strong mentors. So the mentors that you choose and you go and look for inside your organization, you want to make sure that they are, first of all, senior to you in rank inside the organization. You also want to make sure that the people that you choose have some clout inside the organization, <laughs> that they too are respected leaders. Don't choose the underdog as your mentor. That's not the right strategy. <laughs> Find somebody above you who is seen as a strong, respected, and successful leader. Now, how do you go and find that person? Do you find them on an org chart? Do you go and you know, ask human resources about it? Well, in some companies, there is a formal mentorship program where human resources will identify high potential leaders and pair them up with sponsors. But that's not always the case, and in fact, it tends to be not as effective as those mentor relationships that tend to naturally evolve. So how do you get visible? How do you join task forces or take on those opportunities or find out what your CEO's pet project is and see if you can either weasel your way onto that committee or volunteer in some way, shape, or form? But getting in front of people, and getting in front of people often, people will begin to recognize you, to notice you, and begin to ask you questions. Then when you do have a chance to meet them, talk about things like their pet project, things in their department. And it's very helpful to find a mentor who's outside of your organizational org chart vertical line.
So if you're in human resources, go and find somebody in finance. If you're in finance, go and find somebody in operations. If you're in operations, go and find somebody in sales. Go cross across the organization because the way you build strong network and a strong foundation for your mentors is that you have this network that spans the entire organization. Now when all of those people are in the room and your name comes up, oh, the VP of sales knows you. Oh, the VP of operations knows you. And the CEO is like, well, how do all of you people know this person and I haven't heard of this person? Who is this person? Tell me about them. And that's how it happens. That's how you get on a list, if you will, of the high potentials and you start to get noticed. Now those activities naturally lead into what we're talking about as developmental opportunities. We need the opportunity to build our skills and to demonstrate our competency. And again, as women, we don't have the naturally occurring opportunities that the men tend to have. So we need to be on the lookout for them. So we need to do things like, first of all, let our human resources department know that we aspire to a role in senior leadership. Let our bosses know that we aspire to a role in leadership other than theirs. Unless your leader and the organization is into transparent succession planning. So if your boss knows where they want to go, they know that they're not likely going to get promoted until there's a replacement for them. That could be you. So having that conversation with your leader can be very helpful. But if that's not the culture inside your organization and your boss doesn't want to go anywhere, that's not the recommended conversation to have with your boss. So figure out where you do want to go. Let human resources know. Let your boss know. Let other people know. And look for opportunities to learn about those particular departments. So look for different ways as far as your development opportunities are concerned. And in any of these things, either from your strong mentor or through these developmental opportunities, be looking and asking for effective feedback. You know, one thing that we know is that not everybody is skilled at giving feedback. We also know that not everybody is skilled at receiving feedback. <laughs> we have an advantage. In Toastmasters, we learn how to do both. And it is a distinct advantage that we have over many people inside of our organization. So are you open and willing to receiving feedback? And while in Toastmasters we tend to say, oh yes I am, it's not as easy when it actually happens in our companies, in our jobs, or even if we're in a leadership role in Toastmasters, to get that effective feedback where we have the opportunity to learn and grow means that we need to be willing to listen to, tell, to somebody telling us that we're not doing something as effectively as we could be. And so how do we accept that feedback? How do we use it to grow? How do we try to strip out the emotion that is absolutely attached to that feedback on the receiving end? And how do we make sure that we use it for our benefit? It's even more difficult inside of a corporate environment. So thinking about these three things, make sure that these are on your list as far as activities and tasks and things that you need to be doing and paying absolute attention to in order to help get yourself promoted.